good morning, friends. And at the outset, let me thank Dr. Bansi for inviting me to speak on uh, conventional insulins. Thank you, chairpersons, for your kind in, in, uh, introduction. And I'm extremely happy to share the dais with uh, people like uh, M-Tech in Diabetes, Master of Technology, Jyoti Dev, and the teacher of the teachers, uh, Professor Das, who are going to speak after me. So thank you very much. And then now today's topic is a little different. Everybody talks about the advancement, and then you had a kind of car like um, Fiat and Ambassador to then Marutis and now BMW and all luxury car. I am going a step backward. And the, there is a partly science and partly economics in the talk. So let us see uh, what uh, we want to say. The first thing which we know is that whenever we use a medication, we compare efficacy versus cost, whether this medicine is cost effective or not. So whatever you spend money, whether you get the enough return. And uh, Dr. Varathya said about the return, so return is very important. Uh, we know all, everything about diabetes like global burden, and then we also know what are the typical Indian patients, uh, their BMI, their beta cell dysfunction, high PPG excursions, and we are uh, carboholic, like we have a very high carbohydrate diet, and that is what we have seen, and that is why we are on the uh, top of the diabetes city epidemic. And all across the globe, I mean all across the country, north, south, west, east, our carbohydrate consumption is very high, and that is why we are also known as carboholic now. And around 65 to 70 percent of our daily energy comes from the carbohydrate that is trust. So we are, as Dr. Shashank always said, that we are sarcopenic, where our muscle mass is less, our fat is high, and that is what we actually are facing. And that is why our protein consumption is less, and our carbohydrate consumption is very high. Not only that, we are peculiarly uh, postprandial sugar people. So most of the times uh, we focus only on the postprandial glucose control. And if you see here the comparison between the uh, Caucasians and the other populations versus Indians, then our postprandial excursion is more, and that partly because of the genetics and more likely to be because of the carbohydrate consumption. And again, we are absolutely in a either post-meal or post absorption state in uh, 24 hours a day. Now, what is healthcare expenditure in India? So there are few studies reported the expenditure spent in managing the diabetes in Indian, like annual median direct cost in all across north, south. The, it is from ranging from 11,000 to almost 20,000. Two in north, it is very high, that is 45,000 Indian rupees. And annual median indirect cost of the treating diabetes is around 2,500 to uh, 12,000 12, rupees. So that is very important. Huge cost is involved. Believe me, when a parent comes to me and his child is diabetes and type 1, then it is equivalent to another child in the family. That is the cost of managing a diabetic child in the family. So it is a huge burden which we must remember. Again, um, diabetes management poses high economic burden and 34% of the annual income of the adult type 2 diabetes patient goes in diabetes management. And this study was done with A. Ramchandran and et al. Uh, long back uh, in the year 2007. So there is a huge cost of managing diabetes is very important. Now, we all know that insulin is one of the important hormones. Uh, once uh, Dr. Bansali said that what is the most important hormone in the endocrine system, then it is insulin. If you don't have insulin, you cannot live for more than a certain period of time. All other hormone deficiency we have seen can last a little longer than the insulin deficiency. So it is a vital drug, and some 5.6 million Indians must take daily 
to manage their diabetes and prevent the complication. However, the affordability of medication in general and for insulin specifically is currently of great concern to the people with diabetes, their families, and the healthcare providers. We another important thing is that most of the times, so barring a few patients who have reimbursement from the government or from their organization, most of the patients they spend their expenditure from their pocket because in our setup up till now there is no reimbursement of outdoor medication to the patient however now we are uh, hearing that some outdoor medicines are also going to be reimbursed so that is very important thing those patients who are on an outdoor basis and taking treatment as an outdoor patient their reimbursement is not that so they have to spend money from their pocket we know that insulin is needed. We know about the insulin inertia and the duration almost 8 to 10 years before starting insulin. Till then, we go for diet, exercise, drugs, and whatever it is. And then after 8 to 10 years of duration of diabetes, and with the A1C of more than 9%, it is the time where usually patients with diabetes are willing to take uh, insulin. So that is a very important thing. But when we talk about insulin, uh, why insulin is not prescribed frequently, and what are the reasons which we'll now dissect a little later. But remember, the 35% patients of diabetes require insulin therapy, and we know that those patients with a shorter duration, they, their requirement would be around 1.8% uh, within six months, but as the time goes by, their requirement goes up. So here, if we break up, out of this 35% of the patients, the human insulin is around 70%, analogs are around 30%, and combinations are around 3%. As I said earlier, that 1.8% of the patients with duration of less than half year or six months required insulin therapy, but then when the duration goes high, about 20 years, almost 50% of the population need insulin. Many of the type 2 patients would need two injections in a day and type 1, three or four injections in a day and the insulin requirement would be around five to one units per kg in type 2 and it could be one to 1.5 units in type 2 diabetes per kg and that is the cost would be around two to three vials depending upon the uh, strength of the vials or the pens and six vials per month respectively in type 2 diabetic patients. So it is the high cost of insulin dates back to the history. When insulin was invented in 22-23, then the Benting and Best refused to take the patent on their name for this insulin because it is a drug which is going to be used for mass and they forfeit their profits of royalty for this injection. So they sold the insulin patent to the University of Toronto for a mere one dollar. Look at the act at that point of time. And they wanted everyone who needed their medication to be able to afford it. Cost is a big factor around the diabetes. A study highlighted around 25% of the patients of diabetes confessed about the cost related underuse of insulin and this is clearly related to poor glycemic patients. So we know the insulin inertia is uh, there are many causes, but cost is also one of the important cause for patients agreeing to take insulin. Around 66% of these individuals also faced hardships in purchasing the diabetes equipment, suggesting wider cost barriers in the management of diabetes. So it is not the only insulin. They would need pen, they would need needles, and they would also need monitoring, and so many things are required for these patients and poor glycemic control was more prevalent among the patients who reported cost-related underuse than among the patients who did not have financial issues. So cost is a very big factor. Now what happened? The people, because of the cost also, they uh, cut down their insulin doses, they skip their doses sometimes, and there are so many things happening, and that also is a contributory factor for poor control of diabetes. When cost is high or not affordable, then there is a non-adherence and then ultimately 
it leads to poor glycemic control. And 45% of the patient with type 2 diabetes fail to achieve adequate glycemic control below 7% in this situation. So medical adherence also is related to the high cost of medicine that we must remember. And that is why cost, non-compliance, poor glycemic control, uh, percentage of patients being non-compliant ranges from 30 to 64 percent and 19 to 46 percent for users of OED and insulin respectively. And almost 40 percent of the patient type 2 diabetes do not meet A1C goal suggesting poor glycemic control which could be still more and now we have seen in many studies that 75 percent of the population of type 2 diabetes is not under control. So patients with diabetes involved in cost related under use of insulin are threefold more likely to have poor glycemic control. So consequences of poor glycemic, con uh, poor insulin adherence would be inadequate glycemic control, increased mor morbidity, mortality, and increased cost of patient outpatient care, ER visits, hospitalization, and increased cost of managing complications. So the issue is now we ha we have seen the revolution right from the. Uh, animal source insulin which were not purified to the human insulins and then recombinant human insulins purified and then now analogs. Everybody talks about analogs, whether it is uh, short acting analogs, whether it is a long acting analogs or whether it is a premix analogs and then also now people talk about the co-formulations. So what is important is that when we talk about so those patients who really cannot afford the luxury insulin, which I would tell, or the costly insulin, if they are offered the conventional human insulin, it would be equally effective in efficacy, in side effects, and the other things. So that is a thing which we must remember that cost is a very important factor. Here you can see that post-prandial glycemic control was significantly improved without increasing the risk of hypoglycemia and overall control was similar in patients with type 2 and type 1 diabetes treated on either twice daily regimen with immediate pre-meal injections of bias. And if you compared with the uh, human premix insulin that was very slightly different which may not be having a p-value significance difference, but only numerical difference. So that this study was done by Dr. Bohem uh, in 2002. Insulin analogs, is there a compelling case to use them? So what is important that shall we use analogs only in all patients coming to us or where we have to judiciously decide that this patient really needs analogs and this patient may do away with uh, the conventional human insulin if uh, cost is a constraint. So across the evaluation of all comparisons, only 15 of 64, 23% showed significant increase in lowering the A1C with the analogs than the human insulin. And the weighted difference was very small from in comparison to Analog. So that is, this was the published in Diabetes Care uh, in 2014. Human insulin is cost effective and safe and if you look at Diabetes Care article, the same article, it said that regular insulin is just as effective as the rapid acting insulin analog. Similarly, NPH is also not less efficient in controlling the diabetes in comparison to analogs like Largin and Datamir. And so, with there are two exceptions which have been mentioned in this article that type 1 diabetic patients require basal analog uh, insulin because they produce no endogenous insulin, it would be better to use insulin analog. And for those patients in the unusual occurrence of overnight hypoglycemia in type 2 diabetes who ingest bedtime snack, it may be helpful to prescribe an analog with rapid acting insulin b before supper and if hypoglycemia occurs early overnight, a basal analog will be useful. So hypoglycemia related to these things would be very useful. And we can also the, see the impact of treatment non-compliance on mortality, which can be seen from here, that those who are non-compliant have 
1.6 times increase in all-cause mortality in these patients. We also know about the glycemic control in UK PDS and DCCT, so we will not go in those details. But what is the global voice? Global voice is very strong that Americans, high cost of insulin sends American to Canada where it is 90% cheaper, to Mexico where the insulin is cheaper. Parents uh, did some protest to price gouging insulin manufacturers and families across the border in search of affordable insulin went to Israel, Italy, Germany, Green, uh, Greece, Taiwan and Canada, all countries where the insulin is bought for this patient. So very important thing is that the cost of insulin is not only for us but for all even the developed countries across the world which is very important. And now we are talking about the uh, insulin, uh, the biosimilar insulins and the other brands of insulin. Americans also talk about the generic medicine and generic drugs for reducing the cost of medicine. World Health Organization also recommends that insulin should be available at all times at a price the individual can afford and the community can afford. So that is very important. Even ADA recommendations also said about the same that providers should be aware of rising cost of insulin and this negatively impacts the adherence to the clinical treatment by people with diabetes. So addressing the insulin access and affordability and endocrine statement also voices the similar concerns about the cost of insulins and availability of the insulin to the needy at an appropriate and reasonable cost. So this is also very important thing. Efficacy of human insulin versus analog, whether we are talking about the efficacy, whether we are talking about the hypoglycemia, whether we are talking about the nocturnal hypoglycemia, all these slides, they tell us that there is a marginal difference and where those who cannot afford analog, we should not hesitate to give them conventional insulin for having good control of diabetes. Efficacy of human insulin versus analogs also we can see that there is a, some difference, but that difference and the, if you look at the cost effectiveness, then this difference can be wiped out and we can see that uh, human insulin can be given. ADA statement on cost consideration, consideration of cost is an important component of effective management for many patients with type 2 diabetes with relaxed A1C goal, low rates of hypoglycemia, prominent insulin resistance as well as those with cost concern, human insulin may be the appropriate choice of therapy and clinicians should be familiar with its use and this statement came in 2022. So that is a very important thing. Likewise, biosimilars, if you look at the cost of innovator, one biosimilar and the other biosimilar, there is 20 to 40 percent of the reductions in biosimilars also. Likewise, here also, if you look at the cost in India and cost in USA, there is a huge gap of the cost of insulin in both the countries. So, friends, sorry for this slide, but this also tells us the same thing. And so impact of biosimilar insulin on healthcare delivery also is seen from here that there are more savings and better healthcare even with biosimilar insulins. So in summary, I would say that cost of insulin has been rising steadily at a pace several fold that of other medical expenditures, thus contributing to significant burden and hence and non-adherence to treatment. Advantage of reduced hypo Glycemia of newer long-acting basal insulin analogs over NPH are only modest in actual practice. Similarly, no important difference in A1C and hypoglycemia observed with rapid-acting insulin analogs over human regular insulin. Therefore, consideration of cost is an important factor component of effective diabetes management in appropriate individuals. And lastly, for many patients with type 2 diabetes, those patients who do not need very stringent control, they can do away with little higher diabetes control. They can also be used human insulin instead of analogs. And achieving the best balance between the efficacy and affordability is the need of time for effective diabetes management. So 
a car can take you where do you want to go whether you travel in bmw or whether you travel in honda that is a story which we must remember and thank you very much for kind listening